There are many verbs in English to describe causing something else, but there are two main categories. Category one are the more common verbs, and these describe things that affect someone, such as he made me do it. But the second category are more advanced. And these describe situations where something is done for someone else. For example, he had her car washed. Now, most people stick to five basic verbs for the causative, but there are many more. So I'm going to go through them now. And if you want to be a C1 English or C2 English learner, make sure you learn carefully the more advanced, less common words. Let's start with make. So imagine that you were a child. Remember being a child? Perhaps this happened to you. Your mother wants you to go to school, but you. Want to play games at home? So who wins? Well, I think you know the answer. Of course, your mother. Why? Because your mother made you go to school. She put influence on you that caused you to go to school. So we use make in this way. In this structure here, made is the past simple of make. You is the object. That's the person affected by this making, and go is what you do in the end. You go to school. So go is just the infinitive on its own. But we have some alternative words. We don't just have to use make. We can also use these words. My mother forced me to go to school. It means the same, but a small difference because we have two before go here. And then my mother compelled me to go to school. Also means make a little bit more strongly. Or possibly my mother had me go to school. Now had means she made it happen, but it. Implies there may not have been direct force. Maybe she had other ways of making it happen. Maybe she offered some nice sweets if you went to school. But the end result was you got to school. The second type of causative verb is let, and let is really the opposite of make. Let's have a look at the example here. So let's imagine it's not a school day this time, and you ask if you can go to the shops. What does your mother say this time? Your mother says yes. Your mother let you go shopping. So here, let is really the opposite of make. When your mother makes you do something, she puts influence on you that forces you to do it. If your mother lets you do something, it means she doesn't use her influence. But you still had to ask her. She had to make the decision for you. She used her power to say, "Go on, do what you want." Here's the structure that we use, similar to make. Let actually here let is the past participle, but it's it's the past simple, but it stays the same because it's irregular. Then you are the object again, and then go is the verb in the infinitive form. Some alternatives also exist here. You could say your mother allowed you to go shopping. The difference here being to before go. You could also say your mother permitted you. To go shopping in the same way to go at the end, and then a third type of these verbs that affect someone、uh, begin with help. In this example, imagine you fell over and hurt yourself. What would you want to happen? Well, perhaps this: someone sees you are hurt, and the stranger helped you stand up. Did you stand up on your own? No. Someone did something that caused you to stand up, and this time it is help. The structure here, helped, is the past simple. You're the object again. The verb is stand. But there's something different about help. Help can have 
to followed by the verb go, or it can not have to. They're both grammatically accepted. It can either be helped you to stand or helped you stand. Both are fine here. You can use either. And we have some alternatives again, but some complications this time. So some alternative verbs are the stranger assisted me to stand up. So assisted takes the place of help. This time we have to use to before the verb. And the stranger aided me to stand up. Here we again use to before the verb. But the more common way of expressing these is aided me in standing up or assisted me with standing up. Uh, and in fact, both could use in or with. In followed by the verb followed by ing and with followed by the verb followed by ing. That's the more common way of using these verbs, so a slightly different grammatical construction. Let's move on to those more advanced features where we are looking at things done for someone. First of all, have. So let's imagine your car is dirty, but you've had a really hard day. You're tired. You don't want to wash it yourself. So what do you do? You ask someone else to wash the car for you. We can express this with the, with the verb have as follows. You had your car washed. And this literally means you didn't do it someone else did. And going a bit further, you arranged for it to happen. You didn't do it, someone else did, and you asked that someone to do it. So have is used in this way. When someone does something for you, but you requested that it happened, or you put some influence on to make someone else do it. Alternatives here could include the following. I arranged for my car to be washed. So here, arrange goes with for. It's like a combined uh, verb here. My car is the object. But here we use a full passive form, to be washed. To be is in the infinitive and washed is in the past participle here. Or you could use this structure. I saw to it that my car was washed. Different grammatical construction here. Saw to it is a phrasal verb, but this has to be followed by that. And after that, we need a full clause with a full verb. So the verb at the end, was washed, is in its normal stated form. Um, normal stated form. To be goes into the past simple to match the earlier verb saw and washed is in the past participle. So it's a proper ordinary passive form. So two possibilities there. But there's one more word yet that we've not covered, which is get. Have a look at this example. Imagine you bought a new TV, but the next day it caught fire. Oh dear. Now, you're not very happy about this, so you go to the shop and complain. So what happens as the result of complaining? They agree to replace your TV. Now we can express what happens here using the verb get in the past simple. You got your TV replaced. Did you replace it? No. Did someone else replace it? Yes. Did you ask them to do it? Yes. So someone else did something for you because you asked for it. And so again, we use got followed by the object, your TV, and then the verb in the past participle form, replaced. So you're probably asking, what is the difference between had and got? Well, in many ways, had and got here mean the same, but there can be a small difference. Watch closely. Had something done emphasises the activity. So in I had the TV replaced, what I'm emphasising is what happened in the end. Something was replaced. But with got, I'm emphasising the arrangement. I got the TV replaced. Now, it's not always a clear difference. 
You can use got to emphasize the activity. You can use had to emphasize the arrangement. But when you use got, generally, you're showing that you put some effort into making it happen. So the person who went back to the shop to get their TV changed, they'd obviously had to persuade them. They were not happy. So they would put some effort in to make it happen. They're emphasizing the arrangement. Did you get the TV replaced? Yes, I got the TV replaced because I made them do it. Now, on my advanced English grammar course, which there's a link to it below, uh, we go into these causative verbs in even more detail with practice tasks. So click on the link below to join my advanced English grammar course, which has far more than that, has lots of advanced English grammar topics, which will be really useful for you.